Alright, so once you're on your Raspberry Pi, the first thing you're going to do is open up your terminal. And we're going to need to make sure that we have the dev tools. Now if you followed all my tool or all my tutorials up until this point, you should be all set. Um, but just in case, let's make sure. And sorry, let me move all this. I don't want to bump and lose the resistor and all this stuff. Okay. Um, just to be sure, let's make sure we have it. So to do that, we're going to type sudo and um, apt-get install python and then we want python rpi.gpio uh, and we'll hit enter and like I said if you have followed my tutorials up to this point it should say that you already have this and it's all updated and all this stuff um, but if not you, it might take you a little bit to get through everything but otherwise that's really all you have to make sure you have to have that gpio stuff um, enabled on your Python or your Raspberry Pi. So once we have that done, now we're free to actually make the program. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to open up uh, Python 2.7. Uh, so just open up idle here and wait a second as it's opening up for us. And what we're going to want to do is go file new window and we can go ahead and close out of this probably sucking up some resources. So now let's actually make our uh, program. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we have to import uh, the GPIO stuff. So first we'll do import capital R capital P lowercase i dot capital all caps GPIO and then we want to we'll just like import that as just a lowercase gpio. You can import it as whatever you want. You can even import it. I think it's io or something if that's not conflicting, which it's not. So you could do that. Um, and then the other thing we're going to just import just for the purposes of making a basic uh, program is we're going to import time. And uh, just one more thing that I suggest that we do is gpio dot set warnings. And then in the parentheses, say false. Um, what it's probably going to do for a lot of you is when we run the program, it's going to throw, it's not an error, like your program will still work. I guess it's kind of an error, but it's, it's a warning. That's exactly what it is. It's a warning. And it's going to say this channel is already in use. Um, but it's not a big deal. So if you want that to go away, you can type that. Otherwise, I'm just going to comment it out for now so you can see it, um, what, what I'm talking about. But you can put that in or not. It, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to affect anything. So the next thing that we want to do in our little program here is we're going to set. Um, you want to activate, basically, the pin that you plan to use. So the way that we're going to do that is first you go GPIO, oops, GPOI dot set mode. And we're going to use GPIO dot capital BCM. And I believe it's here where you can say dot something else. I forget what it is, but you can say dot something else, and then you can refer to the actual like physical pin number rather than its programming name. But we're going to use the programming name. And then the next thing we want to do is say GPIO dot setup. And then in here, the first parameter is going to be the pin number. And then we're going to treat this uh, GPIO pin as an output. This would be a good time to also mention um, a couple things about the Raspberry Pi GPIO. Um, the Raspberry Pi has absolutely no overvoltage protection. So what this means is, as you know, your Raspberry Pi is powered by a 5 volt um, charge coming into it. And the GPIO pins are directly uh, connected to your processor. So if you say you want to make an RC car and you've got input output going on, or you, let's say you've got like a sensor or a camera, something that's like taking high power and you've got an external power supply somewhere besides on the Pi, um, or besides what is powering your Pi, if you send a signal back, because a signal is actually just a, a voltage, right? Um, God, I wish I could think of, I forget what the charge is, but in a second you'll see the, what the signal you send is either a high or a low. And I think high is like one volt. 
that it sends as a signal, and then low is just it sends a zero volt. And so it, it just changes its mind, basically. And that's how you're sending a, a, a zero or a one, so to speak. Um, and so that's how you interact physically with these things. So, um, but someone, maybe someone can post down there. If I figure it out, I'll maybe annotate or something, what the voltage exactly is. It might be like 1.7. I, I really can't remember. Anyway, um, anyway, it sends a charge. And, but if you send a charge into the GPIO that you say you send in a 9 volt, um, well, you send in 9 volts, you're, you could fry your pi. And so obviously that's not something you want to do. So until you're comfortable with doing uh, circuitry, uh, I would not suggest you use your GPIO pins for input. That's just my suggestion. Unless, unless everything that's powering uh, your circuit is your Pi. But as soon as you add an, an external powering supply besides your 5 volt you know, plug into the Pi, um, that's a whole different ballgame. you got to be really careful and make sure you set up your circuit correctly so your input is not... Um, too much. So anyways, continuing right along, we're going to use the pin as an output pin because you could use it obviously as input as well. So now what we want to do is create our um, our program. So what we're going to do is let's say, um, just to give it something interesting, I mean we could just make it turn on or something, but let's, let's actually make it like a real program. And so what I'd like to do is like let's mimic a door lock, right? So if someone comes up to the door, asks them for their password. If they enter the correct password, the door unlocks for a few seconds, just enough time for them to open the door, and then it automatically relocks itself again, waiting for another password entry. So let's make a program to do that. So we want this, first of all, we want this program to run all the time. So we're going to encase it in a while true loop. And the next thing we're going to want to do is gpio.output18. Uh, and the GPIO, or the signal we want to send, is a high signal. So think of what we're going to do is when the, the uh, LED light is on, that's going to signal as if the lock is engaged. And then when the LED is off, the lock is not engaged. A lot of times on locks, you're going to have like you know some sort of light that denotes what's going on. So if the light is on, that means the lock is engaged. If the light is off, that means the lock is unlocked. So now what we're going to have is we're going to have passcode. So passcode equals raw input, and within here, you know, we're going to put the question, uh, what is pi? So anybody that's not familiar with our program, probably going to put in the, you know, numerical value of pi, but that's not actually what we're looking for. So we're little tricksters. Now, if the passcode equals uh, awesome, then what we're going to do is we're going to say GPIO output to pin 18. And the signal we're going to send is GPIO.LOW for low. So that's going to turn off our, you know, uh, metaphorical lock, so to speak. Uh, or otherwise it's going to turn off our LED light. And then what we want to do is we're going to time sleep for four seconds. So the person has four seconds to like, you know, open the door. You know, obviously I don't have to shut it in that amount of time. So the lock is usually, you know, electric lock. And so if it shuts, the door can shut while it's already locked. It's usually not a big deal. So we've got that. So they got four seconds to open the door before they'd have to re-enter the password. Else, let's say they, the passcode entered is not awesome. Then we're going to say GPIO.output. And what we want to do here, even though we don't, we wouldn't have to do this, right? Because we've already, um, while true, the output is high already. But just as a, you know, a bit of a fail safe, we're going to go ahead and say uh, GPIO dot high. Just to be certain, um, we're going to send one more high signal. And we'll just go ahead and say print uh, wrong password. And then, you know, call police. <laughs> no. But anyway, um, so that's our program. And uh, if you're not comfortable with Python programming, I do have a bunch of basic Python tutorials. Um, it's just kind of assumed at this point you know Python programming. So if you don't, check out some of my basic tutorials. Um, but most of these programs, I mean, I assume that almost anybody brand new to programming could probably see what's going on, right? This is maybe a little confusing, but it's just 
this is just like always. So like true, you could also say while well, one is less than two, right? It's always going to be true. So, but or you can just say true. Um, this is setting the pin. This is defining a variable passcode as raw input, which allows a user to put an input. Um, and then if the passcode is awesome, then it does this. Otherwise, it's going to do this. So pretty, pretty simple even if you don't know programming. But as we continue on, it might be useful for you to learn some programming. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save this. And uh, just kind of note where you're saving it. In our case, we're saving it as slash home slash pi. I'm just going to put it here. It's fine. And make sure you save it as a dot pi. Um, so we're going to say gpio um, example dot pi. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and hit save there, and sure enough, all set. Now, the next few things that we need to do is, first of all, we have to connect it to our Raspberry Pi. Um, but one more thing I just want to bring up is you can't run this program from here. For example, if we go to run this, it's going to throw an error because we're not running it as a super user. So we'll wait a second. Right, we don't have any access to devmem. Now, the reason for this is because this program is actually trying, it is going to talk directly to our processor, and we could do some serious damage. So, just being the system that it is, it's not going to let us do that unless we're running as the root user or a super user, which is what sudo is for. Super, us super user do, I think is what it stands for. So anyway, now let's pop over to our Raspberry Pi and let's plug in everything and then we'll come back over to this screen and begin uh, running our program. So uh, let me go do that.